at the world event Triumph Daytona 660, I have the chance to meet a, a key person in the Triumph company. Steve Sargent is the chief product officer. officer. Yep. It's complicated for me, but the, the main thing is that even if the name is complicated, you are really a key person in the company. But let's talk one minute, first of all, about the bike, because yep. we are new for the bike. Great bike. Thank you. Until I came here, of course, I read everything about the bike and I saw that I know everything wrong, mm -hmm. completely wrong, because you showed us last evening the figures. I didn't know how do the bike stays on acceleration mm. and speed. And it seems that in this class is the best. Yep, so in our back-to-back -back testing, the Nauta 60 and also the Nauta 100 times, uh, we are the best of what we consider to be the competitors in this class. You were very elegant uh, last evening. You showed us the competitors in colors, but uh, everybody knows the colors. Red, blue, green, it does not need any translation. Anyway, the message is the bike is very nice, very fluent, very... Uh, and if you ask me, the main advantage of this bike is the torque. Mm. Because it starts from 3000 RPMs, let's mm. say, and it's almost linear. I don't recall another model to have such a linear torque. Yeah, it's something that we aim for generally with our three-cylinder bikes is to have a very broad spread of torque. But on this model, um, like you say, from really 3000 to over 11,000 RPM, you've got more than 80% of the torque. In general, exactly the range used on the street. Mm. If you have torque at 3,000, you, you can solve any problem in the traffic. But the good thing is, you know, if you, uh, even if you're riding on the twisty roads, if you go into a corner and you're not quite in the right gear, it'll still pull you out through the corner. So, you know, if you're in a gear too high, it's fine. Doesn't matter. If you're in a gear too low, it's also fine. Third, fourth, fifth, it's the same. Exactly. Yeah. You know what, what bikes uh, gave me the same feeling many years ago? Procket 3. Okay. Yeah, it's the same. Wah, wah, wah. You don't know in which gear you are because everywhere is the same. I was impressed by some of your achievements. First of all, many years ago in 2002, you went almost alone in Thailand mm -hmm. and you started the operation in Thailand from zero. Yes. From a small office, mm -hmm. purchasing land, mm -hmm. hiring people. Yep. And after 10 years, when you left, you left there uh, a real fantastic operation. Yep. So when I left, we had three factories. Uh, we had about 1,200 employees. And, you know, we, as I said to you last night, we started really with a very, very small team in an office in Bangkok. Um, we didn't have the land then. We didn't have a factory. So we had to purchase the land. We had to um, employ contractors to build the factory, build the factory, employ the workers, put in the machinery, and yeah, really started from scratch. And for those who are not aware of the quality which is possible to achieve in yeah. Thailand, read a little bit, study a little bit the history of this country, mm. because everybody is pushed by the religion. Mm. They don't know how to be, uh, selfish or, uh, or they try to do the best all the time. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing that I really like about working with the Thai people is they have a good heart and they care about what they do. So they always want to do the best job they can do and they have a really, really good attention to detail. And they're a, they're a country that um, still creates a lot of things with their hands. So they have really high skill levels and good craftsmanship because I think a lot of countries in the West have lost that craftsmanship and that, and, and, and that ability to make things it's with their hands. Something. Yeah. Yeah. But in Thailand, they still have that. But what, what always impressed me about working with the Thai people is if you, if you tell them what you want to try and achieve, they will go beyond what you expect them to do to try to achieve it and to make something special. So, yeah, I, I really enjoyed my time here. And of course, as a recognition of your effort during these 10 years, when you came back in the company, you were invited in the board of directors, uh -huh. normal. 
and then you started another job in the company because from what I know, you celebrated very recently 30 years in the company. Correct, yeah. 30 years, if you don't live too much, it's a, it's a lifetime. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long time in one company. Yeah, uh, and then you started a different thing and now you are responsible of the, or due to you, it was possible to start the cooperation with Bajaj. Mm -hmm. Due to you, it was possible to re-enter in the uh, highest level of the racing with uh, being supplier of the class Moto2. Mm. This, after me, was a fantastic result because took everything at a different level. Yeah. Now everybody knows that Triumph is a, one of the best companies in the world because you can see no engines are breaking in the competition. Mm. This is the ultimate uh, proof. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting because when Triumph started again under John Bloor, obviously the focus initially for the company was to start producing very good quality uh, road bikes again and to re-establish Triumph as a premium quality brand. And racing was um, not something that was a priority for the company to start off with because Triumph had to re-establish itself in people's mind as a quality product and something that was desirable and something that you wanted to purchase. So for a long time, Triumph didn't get too involved in racing. Um, although obviously when we started to produce the Daytona 675, it was a very sport focused, super sport motorcycle and people did race it. And we had some good success in super sport, particularly, you know, we won British super sport championships. We won Daytona 200 with this motorcycle. But the most prestigious competitions in the world. Yeah. British Superbike is the uh, yeah. most powerful national competition. Yeah, and we won some TT races as well. So so the Daytona 675 was the thing that changed the perception a little bit that this new uh, Hinkley Triumph company could produce performance motorcycles. But the, the opportunity to get in Moto2 almost came by accident, actually. Um, so there, when I started working at Triumph, there was a guy who was looking after the um, engineering on the engine side, who I knew very well. And, uh, you know, we traveled on business quite a few times, but he, he left the company and set up his own engineering firm. And he had the opportunity to work in the MotoGP paddock. Um, he did some work for Kenny Roberts. When, when Kenny was building his own engines and his own motorcycles, this guy did some work with Kenny. From his contacts within the paddock, he found out that the, the Moto2 contract with Honda uh, was not going to be renewed. So Dorna were looking for a new engine supplier for Moto2. And this guy phoned me up and he said, um, do you think there's any possibility that Triumph might be interested in doing the engines for Moto2? And um, I'm, a, I'm a race fan. So I, I thought, that is that's an amazing opportunity and not something that you get offered every day but i knew that within triumph we'd have to convince a lot of people that this was the good thing to do and i think naturally a lot of people were a bit nervous because you know it might be a tricky egg con con yeah well i think it's you're putting your reputation on the line yeah. Um, or, or, yeah, I mean, pe people think that um, if you're a single make series, you can't lose. But actually, you can. Yeah. You can very easily lose your reputation. And um, the problem that you have as a single engine supplier is none of the riders are contracted to us directly. They're contracted to the team. So it's not like, um, say I was honda or yamaha or somebody and i i'm i'm paying this guy to ride for me now if big deep so if that guy is uh abusing the engine i can say to him yeah. don't do that otherwise you might find your contract next year might not be renewed right but for us as an engine supplier we don't have that um that ability to do that so a we have to make sure that the engine is strong and bulletproof and as reliable as possible and the only thing we can do is go to the um, riders and say, please do not go above certain RPM. The, the problem the problem isn't on um, 
on the upshift because we have a rev limiter. The problem is on the downshift. So if the, if the riders downshift too quickly, the revs can climb very, very high. So um, when we started Moto2, we had a rev limit on the upshift of 14,000 RPM. And then a couple of years later, we increased that to 14,400. But on the downshift, we've seen some riders hitting 15,600 RPM and even a little bit higher than that. Uh, Two years ago, it happened something similar with Vinales. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly, yeah. exactly. And obviously, with his team, they made a decision that yeah. you know they they had the ability to punish him. But for us, we don't have that ability. All we can do is say, look, please don't do that. Otherwise, you might find that your engine is not giving you the performance that you want it to give you. So, it's it's a difficult situation. But I think. Um, the reliability, the durability of the engines have impressed everybody, um, and the sound, the sound of the sound of the 32, 32 three-cylinder engines. I remember the um, the first uh, Moto2 race with Triumph in Qatar. I'd seen the, I'd seen the bikes in testing, I'd seen the bikes in Jerez when you get bikes going round, but that was the first time I was on the pit lane and 32. Triumph 765 triples started and From uh, the pit lane. Yeah, mm. uh, um, unbelievable, yeah. unbelievable. Fantastic job. And as I said, you are a key person in this whole contract. So you achieved some spectacular things. I hope that uh, we will have more and more surprises from Triumph. I'm sure that we'll have. Uh, because the, all the new models, they come every year in a fantastic uh, rhythm. Thank you very much for this opportunity to test the new bike. Thank you very much well for your time and for this short discussion. And I hope I will see you soon. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, thank you.